the International Space Station. Just 400 kilometers above Earth, this is man's outpost to space. If we ever want to get beyond the moon, it is this man-made structure that will be our first step. 16 nations from around the world have come together to build the elements needed to complete this cosmic outpost. One of the most important parts of Space Station historically is the fact that this was the world combined leaving Earth for the very first time, permanently. You're in a real international part of the International mm -hmm. Space Station, an American uh, robotic workstation inside a European Cooper operating a Canadian arm. And one of the things the arm is going to do is grapple the Japanese transfer vehicle mm -hmm. that uh, would also be supplying logistics to the station. At an estimated cost of $60 billion and behind schedule, teams are working around the clock to get essential station components ready to go into space. The vehicle used to transport almost all of the pieces from Earth is NASA's space shuttle. It alone holds the key to what will truly be the biggest man-made structure in space. more than 180,000 kilograms, the International Space Station orbits the Earth every 92 minutes. As it travels over us at a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour, scientists and engineers from four continents are busy building the parts for this unique research center. These include the Columbus Laboratory under construction in Germany, the Node 3 and Cupola observation deck built in Italy, and the Japanese experiment module now stored at the Kennedy Space Center. Also in Florida, waiting to leave Earth, is an extension to the spine of the space station called the Truss. The only means to transport this heavy equipment to the space station is the shuttle. So if the station is to grow, it's essential the shuttle runs as often as possible. Okay, Rico, go ahead. Okay, I'll lean on a long wait, maybe over. Uh, so on behalf of the many millions of people who believe so deeply in what we do, good luck, Godspeed, and have a little fun up there. And thanks to you, to the launch team, and to everybody in the shuttle program, the crew is go for launch. Ten seconds, go for main engine start. Seven, six, five, three engines up and burning. Three, two, one. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery, beginning America's new journey to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Commander Alan Collins confirming Discovery is rolling onto a course for rendezvous with the International Space Station. Standing by now for burnout and jettison of the twin solid rockets. Discovery jettisons external fuel tank. The shuttle's destination is the International Space Station. From the uh, launch team down here, we have a lot of smiling, happy faces now that the United States is back in the crew launch business. The task of supplying the hardware and know-how to build the International Space Station is assigned to a global network of spaceflight experts and scientists. Some of them have devoted their entire careers to making the International Space Station a reality. The combined manpower that has gone into building, launching, and in-space assembly of the space station to date represents the biggest construction project in history. But it has all come down to this. Can they get the hardware and equipment still needed to complete the station into space? And at what cost? Sometimes the cost is more than money and man hours. On February 1st, 2003, the shuttle program suffered a catastrophic setback. Sweet here. Look at that. Yep, we're getting some G. Good. Let go of the car and it falls. This is amazing. It's really getting uh, really bright out there. In Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure messages and we did not copy your last. Roger, uh, Communications uh, with Columbia were lost at about 8 a.m. Central Time, about uh, 10, 
10 minutes ago. Flock Director Leroy Kane is now instructing controllers to uh, get out their contingency procedures and uh, begin to follow those. Following this tragedy, the shuttle fleet was grounded indefinitely, leaving the fate of the International Space Station hanging in the balance. To try and, and fly the shuttle again after a crash, after we've killed people, it takes a lot of, a lot of people working together, but it really takes a, a lot of courage to do it as well. In 2005, after a seemingly textbook launch of Space Shuttle Discovery, Mission Control were faced with a frightening reality. Foam insulation had disengaged from an external fuel tank during liftoff. Despite two and a half years of careful planning since Columbia, no one knew why this had happened again. NASA needed to know if any damage had been caused before the shuttle and its crew could return to Earth safely. July 2005. Earth waits as NASA prepares to inspect Space Shuttle Discovery for damage. The very future of the International Space Station hangs in the balance. Billions of dollars worth of space hardware sits on Earth waiting for a ride into space. If they can't land in Florida, they end up landing in uh, California. Ian Christie and his team at Neptech developed the laser scanning technology used to search for damage on Space Shuttle Discovery. The team have just returned from Houston, where they process the critical in-orbit scans of the shuttle. This is the first uh, of about a 90-minute procedure sweeping back and forth uh, using the laser dynamic range imager, uh, which is an infrared uh, camera, uh, ensuring that uh, the nose incurred no damage during Discovery's eight-and-a-half-minute climb to orbit yesterday. But I'm bet there's a bunch of flight directors and people in the MMT who are quite happy to have 3D data and will wonder where it is next flight if they don't have it. The yeah. nose cap uh, piece of damage actually did have some laser camera data, so yes. of all the things that they were concerned about, that one was presented there. And that's without having having thought a lot about how to get the data. I mean, next flight, lessons learned, we'll, we'll be expecting to do contingency stuff, right? Yeah, it seems like whenever they want to look at tile, uh, they look at LCS. The laser camera is attached to a shuttle arm which maneuvers it around the craft. The scans were a success, and damage to the shuttle was located. A piece of filler from between the thermal protection panels that protect the shuttle from extreme heat on re-entry had become dislodged at launch. funny for me because I've been working with Ian Christie for over 10 years. He supported me on my first flight and to see those, those early thoughts of the lasers and the cameras that we need, to see them evolve and grow into something that made it possible to fly Discovery.